We're ready to go. Okay. Good morning and welcome back. Today we're playing with a Predator Versa Rototiller. The owner tells me that it just sat for a couple of years and he bought it two years ago and he's used it just a few times, but after sitting and sitting and sitting, it wouldn't start for him. And we tell people all the time, drain the gas before, before you store something for any length of time. If you drain the gas, then your equipment will almost never be featured on one of these videos. So let's get to work on this. Let's get some new fuel in it and let's clean up the carburetor and see what we've got. As you can see, she looks really good. Now, she was a little bit dirty before. I did give it a bath already and haven't gotten to the blades or anything because I'm going to have to test it when I'm done anyway, so we'll clean that afterwards. But let's go ahead and pull the carb off and see what we've got. Usually after you let something sit for a really long time, you're almost guaranteeing that you're going to make a mess out of the fuel. And after fuel sits in the carburetor for a long time, it's going to wreck the internals of the carburetor. You're going to clog your jets. You're going to make your fuel bowl stick and all that. And we tell people over and over and over again, drain the gas when you're storing it. So let's get inside this one, see, see what she is. Oh, that, that's hard to reach. Let's put a little cover off here. See what that does for us. There you go, now she's easy to reach. Easy peasy. Now when you're doing something like this, let's grab a magnet. I always throw a magnet on just, just for a place to keep the nuts and bolts. That way you can keep the nuts and bolts with this project. So if you have to put it to the side to wait for parts later, then you won't wonder where everything is. And if you have multiple projects running, you won't have any problem with that at all because all your nuts and bolts will be in the same place. Okay, this one we're going to have to twist the linkage off. I've seen, I've seen this one before. And if you just twist the end here, this will come off and you don't have to take all this apart. So let's grab some pliers. My handy dandy favorite needle nose. So we'll grab this and we'll push this up a little bit and give it a little bit of a twist. And this will hop right out. And like I said, this will hop right out. Of course, it doesn't work as well when the camera's running because that's just how this works. Let's go around to this side where I get a better angle. Okay, now hop right out for me, buddy. It's almost there. Okay, now to remove this, all we're going to do is slide our pliers on and twist it around, supposedly. And this works about 99% of the time. And there you go. Now I'll gently remove this spring. And you want to be gentle on your springs, because if you, if you stretch it out, then it'll be funny. And remember to take pictures before you start, so that you remember which hole that each thing goes into. And I'll twist that out. And we'll put it here on our magnet with the rest of our stuff. And now our carburetor is just a fuel line away from coming off. We're going to go ahead and pinch this so that we don't have fuel leaking all over the place while we do this. And don't pinch too hard on this hose or you can wreck the hose. You can put a permanent dent in it. That should take care of that. Let's ease the fuel line off. And then we'll take the carburetor over and get a look at the insides. And that's that. There's your carburetor. Okay, now we've gone ahead and emptied the carburetor and gotten the gas out of it. So let's have a look at the inside. 
Now, a lot of times on these carburetors, I'll look at how much they cost first. And if I find the carburetor for 20 bucks, then I'll just go ahead and throw a carburetor on it and then put this one off to the side. In this case, we've actually got one ready to go. I've already got a carburetor that's perfect for this, all cleaned up and ready to go, but I figured we would review this one first while we do it. So you've got jets here and in here. That's what you want to clean out. If you look deep inside, you can see the little jet, the little hole in the center of it here. That's where your gas goes into your engine. This would be considered your jet. So you want to run something through that and run something down this to make sure they're nice and clear or your engine won't run correctly. If you leave just a little obstruction in it, then your motor will cycle up and down. It'll do what we call hunting. And actually make a set of drill bits for this. Yep. And I just felt that when I ran the wire into this one, I felt a big restriction when I first ran it through. That means I pushed something through, and that's more than likely why this thing wouldn't start right there. So we're, you can see we're clearing this jet. And before we're, we're done, we'll put a really bright light on this and make sure that it looks nice and smooth and round all the way through. Make sure that we don't see anything. Now we're going to have a look at this one. See, and that might have been outside the gas level right there because the wire went straight in all the way to the carburetor without even blinking. Now when we rebuild this, what we'll do is we'll put it in a sonic bath overnight to make sure that she's 100% cleaned. Let me clear this out. Now the next thing, the little orifice in here. Now the next thing we're going to do in the, with this carburetor is put it in the sonic bath and let it sit overnight and get it ready for the next one. Of course, we'll take the float off and everything. Almost bypassed that, and that's important. Make sure that your area around your float is clean. Because that allows fuel inside the tank. And that looks pretty good. But we know gas was getting in only because the fuel bowl had gas in it when we opened it up. So we'll put this one to the side and we'll clean her up and prep her for another day. And then we'll take the one that we've already got ready to go and throw her on and see what we've got. If we're lucky, a carburetor will get this running and we'll have a nice quick flip. If not, we'll go to the next step. Okay, now before we go crazy putting the new carburetor on this, or the rebuilt carburetor as it may be, we're going to go ahead and drain the fuel into the old fuel tank. Because it would be no fun at all to do all that work and have a failure because of the fuel. La, 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 la. You sit there. The gas in this actually looks really good. So once I get it all out, we'll take a better look at it and decide if we can use it for something else or even put it back in this. Okay, that's draining really slow, but it is draining. So we'll just let it be and let it do its thing. Okay, let's get this back together. Dug myself up some gaskets that match up pretty good. And the carburetor. That's just about a dead match. So this should go together easy peasy. Now usually I'll drain the fluid, all the fluid, the, all the fuel before I uh, get started. But in this case, I waited until I had the carb off because it actually bought me one more room to work. There we go, nice and snug. 
Now we'll put our linkage back together. Well, we've got the little bit of extra room. And if you're doing this, if you took pictures, this is easy at this point. If you didn't take pictures, then you're gonna have to go to the manual. But we took pictures. Because we take pictures every time. You'll find if you cross the spring backwards, or if you stretch it out, that it becomes very uncooperative later. You'll find it, you know, the idle flutters and all that. So you want to be really nice to that spring while you're doing it. Oh, that almost clicked in. Note I'm doing this before I bolt the carburetor in. So it gives me a little flexibility back and forth there also. Oh, I took it off from the other side. It looks like I have to put it back on from the other side too. Okay. Stretch that out, turn it, and there it goes, back in the hole. Easy peasy. Now we'll go ahead and bolt everything back together. Don't want to forget our little sleeves. That oh, looks like they like to go on from the back. So let's do it that way. And these little sleeves allow the bolts to hit something other than plastic when you're tightening it on. So you can get the carburetor nice and snug against the motor. Yeah, that looks really nice. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm prone to losing bolts and nuts and things when I work on engines, which is why I always use a magnet. And a lot of car stores will just give them to you if you take one with a logo on it. They don't sponsor me or anything, but if they'll give me a free magnet, I'll happily use it on screen. Where you at, buddy? There we go. Okay, snug and snug. Now we'll tighten them down. Okay, let's put some gas in and see if she works. The gas that came out of it, after I got a look at it, it looked really good, so I reused it. Okay, she's not full, but she has enough to run. And we're not going to bother with the air cleaner or anything until we hear it start. So let's hear it start. Put her on full choke. Put her on full rabbit. Make sure the switch is on, and let's give her a run. sounds pretty good. Looks like we did okay on this deal. Now we did have to work on a few internal parts that we didn't bother showing on the video, but it was nothing of any consequence and it really is about the end result when you're flipping machines. We're using the original air filter that came with it because yeah, it looks pretty good. It doesn't look like this has got a whole lot of hours on it at all.
Okay, and there we go. All nice and done. We'll start her one more time just to make sure she's happy. And I call this one finished. looks pretty good. Okay, looks like I got a little bit hot and sweaty working on that one, but the truth of it is, is my neighbor has a, a back problem. He just had surgery, so I volunteered to cut his yard for him this week and next week while he heals, and I did mine while I was at it. So we took a little bit of a break, and I went and cut a couple of yards and then came back to it. Um, but back to the unit. Yeah, this little tiller came out really nice, and I'm only in at about $150 so far, and I'm sure it'll probably fetch more than that pretty easily. So I'd call that one pretty good. I appreciate everybody watching and don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.